Hi guys, good afternoon. Thanks again for tuning in. So today I'd like to talk about root cellars. Root cellars. These are found in eastern Canada, about as far east as you can go. But before I get into that, I'd just like to talk about this video that Conspiracy R Us recently put out and one of the things he touches upon is sod houses particularly in the plains or sort of like the mid west of Canada or the, the west sort of the western provinces in Canada particularly in areas like Saskatchewan and then I think he also shows some imagery from the Netherlands where they have these uh, sod houses or mud f mud flood houses there. So anyway, I I really like I really liked his video. I thought it was great and it reminded me of something I had seen in the past and I even left a comment about it on his channel and that's root cellars in Newfoundland it seemed like a similar phenomenon here's a, a provincial website for Newfoundland that showcases what they call root cellars so I'll try to break this down and give a definition to what a root cellar is but anyway this is in East Coast Canada and they have this tradition of keeping root cellars where they house potatoes and other root crops which essentially preserves them so they can eat them throughout the uh, seasons potato crops and other things so just to get you acquainted um, this is the east coast of Canada this is um, Newfoundland and Labrador this is actually Labrador up here and this is Newfoundland um, yeah, Labrador is attached to Quebec, the mainland. Here you have the eastern eastern seaboard in the United States. And, yep, Newfoundland is up here. Just for fun, I'll mention there's also this other island at the tip of Newfoundland. It's uh, St. Pierre and Miquelon. And it's actually part of France. Not even French Canada, but it's actually... Um, it's part of the sovereign state of France and apparently historically it was actually claimed originally by the Bosque country in Spain but that's getting away from Newfoundland I will just read this quickly Newfoundland and Labrador is the most easterly province of Canada situated in the country's Atlantic region it comprises the island of Newfoundland and mainland Labrador to the northwest with a combined area of 405,000 square kilometers. In 2013, the province's population was estimated at half a million. About 92% of the po province's population lives on the island of Newfoundland and its neighboring smaller islands, of whom more than half live on the Avalon Peninsula. The province is Canada's most linguistically homogenous, with 97% of residents reporting English as their mother tongue in the 2006 census. Historically, Newfoundland was home to unique varieties of French and Irish as well as the extinct, extinct Biotuck language. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. In Labrador, local dialects of Inu, Imun, and Inuktitut are also spoken. Those are um, some of Canada's First Nations people. Those are the languages they speak. Um, Newfoundland didn't enter Canadian Confederation until 1949. So actually it wasn't part of Canada until 1949. Well, anyway, the basic thing I just wanted to say is that Newfoundland has this tradition of root cellars. And rather than explain it, I'll just read a definition from Wikipedia. root 
Cellar is a structure usually underground or partially underground used for storage of vegetables, fruits, nuts, or other food. Its name reflects the traditional focus on root crops stored in an underground cellar, which is still often true, although a wide variety of food can potentially be stored for weeks to months depending on the crop and the conditions, and the structure may not always be underground. Once again, Newfoundland has a tradition of having root cellars. It has a lot of them, and it's tied in with the tourist industry. Just read the first paragraph. This is from Elliston Root Cellar. Root cellars are a part of Elliston's strong, unique, and cultural heritage. Over 135 root cellars dot the landscape of Elliston, and for this reason, Elliston declared itself the root cellar capital of the world. A high number of root cellars wasn't the only reason for the declaration. Elliston was the first community to use the root cellars as a symbol for early subsistence in such harsh climates. Okay, so here's a map of Newfoundland, and here's St. John's, which is the capital, and Elliston is up here. And this website had a photo gallery, so I'll just try to include as many interesting pictures as I can. And I'll try to leave this as a link in the description below. So here's just a general overview. Potatoes stored in a permanent bin. After being stored for a nine-month period, they make their way to the annual Bird Island Puffin Festival for the region's largest jigs dinner. Permanent bins used to store root crops. I think these are, oh, these are turnips. I guess they store carrots in damp sawdust. I'll try not to browbeat the point by saying it over and over, but I will just say it once. I mean, are these root cellars? Well, they're probably used as root cellars, or are they more realistically um, old foundations of buildings that are left over from a pre-mud flood era, and now they've been inundated, and for some reason the top of the structure is no longer present. But these are basically just old foundations, old basements. This is Rex Chalk. Even at 86, he still uses and maintains his root cellar. One of Elliston's oldest root cellars, dating back to 1839. I don't know how they've determined that. I think all of the root cellars are pretty old.
I wanted to show more pictures of root cellars that I found on Google Images, but I can't verify that all of them are actually from Newfoundland. But if uh, you want to try it yourself, look up root cellar on Google Images, and there's some pretty fascinating pictures. 25 years ago, tourists were visiting Ellison, and everybody was heating into the cellars. People really didn't know what they were. People come asking those questions to people living them. What are they? Do they have electricity? So the fact that they were intriguing to visitors meant there must be something intriguing to us. But we grew up with the cellars. It was almost like the grass. It was almost like the, the cliffs and the ocean. We, we sort of took the cellars for granted. Root cellars were used to store, as the word employees, root crops. And uh, in Hilliston, the basic crops that were stored in those cellars. The root cellar, as belt heritage, modest construction, all local materials. Uh, later on, they started using concrete. It's belt, there's several different types. There's uh, the ground up, where you dig a hole into the ground, build up turf and rock around it, put a trap door over it, and then uh, a, a little house with a roof on it. These are the most common, this is what you'll see. In every community, you'll st in Elliston, these cellars stick out. Uh, because they're mostly of this type, uh, built into a ill side or up against a cliff. Look. Okay, and while I'm on the subject of Newfoundland, I was not, I was a little bit surprised, but uh, I realized that Newfoundland actually had one of these great fires that so many major North American cities had and it caused a lot of destruction. So I'm just going to read that into the video. This is from this is from Heritage, Newfoundland and Labrador, Th the St. John's Fire of 1892. Late in the afternoon of the 8th of July, 1892, a small fire broke out in a St. John's stable after a lit pipe or match fell into a bundle of hay. Always these silly stories. The Great Chicago Fire of 1871 somehow had some ridiculous story of a woman milking a cow and then somehow a fire got started by some accident. But anyway, uh, late in the afternoon of 8th of July, 1892, a small fire broke out in a St. John's stable after a lit pipe or match fell into a bundle of hay. Although containable at first, the flames quickly spread due to dry, dry weather conditions, a disorganized fire department, a poor planning on the part of city officials. Within hours, the fire had destroyed almost all of St. John's, living, leaving 11,000 people homeless and causing 13 million dollars in property damage. And here's some images and just in case we're not clear I don't believe that a fire caused this. This is something else. A lot of people in the comments section on my channel keep telling me to go look at the Tunguska or Tunguska event which was, which was a large, ex large explosion that occurred near the stony Tunguska River near Yeniseisk Governorate which is near, which is now Krasnoyarsk Krai in Russia. I just wanted to sneak that in because a lot of people keep telling me to go look at that, and yes I have, and there's a better description, and I won't uh, get sidetracked. I might make another video about that later. But anyway, I'll just read some of the picture captions, basically just to get these images into my video. View of St. John's from Duckworth Street, east following the Great Fire of 1892. Some unidentified St. John's buildings destroyed in the fire. Again, St. John's is the capital of Newfoundland. The Anglican Cathedral suffered so much damage it took workers more than 10 years to complete its restoration. I mean, what I what I find hard to believe is that there's no, you know, um, woodwork, no trusses after the fire. This, to me, looks more than more more than just a, like more than just a fire it looks more like this place got bombed water street stores in ruins 1892 downtown st john's in august 1892 the city's downtown and harbor looking west from temperance street a month after the great fire what i'm looking at is i'm trying to decide whether this looks like a month after a fire had occurred.
And it looks like there's a YouTube video on this, so I'll try to leave this in the link in the description below. Homeless. Three died. It all began in a small barn at the corner of Freshwater and Pennywell Roads. At about and Pennywell Roads. At about five o'clock in the afternoon of July 8th, a pile of hay caught fire. The only person inside the barn was a farm servant named Patrick Fitzpatrick. Most people believe that he started the fire by accidentally dropping a match or pipe, drained it in a recent practice drill. No one had refilled it. Ran to the harbor, desperate to get in a ship. Others headed for higher ground. Stores were looted. Families stashed in the stone and brick buildings that they thought would survive the fire. But these also burned. Cathedrals were gutted, so were banks and July. It was heartrending. Nothing. 11,000 were now homeless. The government had away by September. A thousand more soon paid for the lumber, glass, nails, and with winter coming, there was no time or money to build brick homes. Numerous buildings on Water Street have flat roofs because of this more than a century ago. Here's a Globe and Mail news article about the fire.